this video, we're going to build off our knowledge of sets and events and sample spaces, and we're going to move on to probability. So the very first thing we need to do is assign some notation. So we're going to have capital P and then some parens, and we're going to stick something in there, the yeah, probability function. So what this is going to do is it's going to take an event and map it to a number in the interval 0, 1, including those two endpoints. So it's going to assign a probability to an event, is what this is saying. So if we look at a basic example, let's have A be the event that you flip a coin and get a tails. Then the probability of A is going to be 1 half, assuming that the coin is a fair coin. All right, so let's get into some important rules. So these are axioms called Magorov's axioms. So first one, let A be an event in S, then the probability of A is greater than or equal to zero. That's our first axiom. Second axiom, S is our sample space, remember. The probability of S equals one. So this is saying the result of your experiment must lie in your sample space. Next one, let A be an event in S and B be an event in S, such that A and B are disjoint. Then the probability of A union B is going to be equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. All right, so if we have a finite number of elements in our sample space, then these three axioms are enough to characterize our probability function. If there is an infinite number of elements, we need just one more. So here is our last one. Let A1, A2, and so on all be events in our sample space S. If AI intersect AJ, which is the empty set for all I equals J, so in other words, choose any two events in S, any two events, and they're disjoint, then if we want the probability of the union of all of those events, we can just take the sums of their probabilities. So. These four axioms, this is all we're going to need to build the rest of our probability. All right, so we're going to end up with a lot of theorems based on this. So our very first theorem, the order doesn't really matter, but the first theorem what we're going to talk about is um, the probability of A complement equals one minus the probability of A. So in other words, the probability of something not happening equals one minus the probability of that thing happening. So this is pretty intuitive, but now we can actually mathematically prove it. So what we're going to do for our proof is start with the probability of our entire sample space. And we know that we can partition this into A union A complement. So the probability of S equals the probability of A union A complement. Nothing crazy going on yet. Now we're going to use axiom number three here, and we're going to split this up because A and A complement are disjoint. We can split them up into probability of A plus the probability of A complement. Now from axiom two, we know probability of S is equal to one. So we have uh, one equals the probability of A plus the probability of A complement. And now just rearrange a little bit and we get that the probability of A complement equals one minus the probability of A. So now we have proved our theorem that the probability of A complement equals one minus the probability of A. All right. Next theorem, the probability we are going to prove that the probability of the empty set equals zero. So here's our proof. We're going to start again with the probability of our entire sample space. So we can rewrite probability of our entire sample space as the probability of our entire sample space union S complement. All right, now because S and S complement are disjoint, we can rewrite the probability of the union as the probability of S plus the probability of S complement. And of course, S complement is just the empty set. So this is equal to the probability of S plus the probability of the empty set. So now, if we look at our two ends of this equation, this is saying the probability of S equals the probability of S plus 
the probability of the empty set. Or another way, if you want to like break down even further, is saying 1 equals 1 plus something. So what is this something? It's got to be 0 in order for this equality to hold. So the probability of the empty set is equal to 0. And now we have shown that the probability of the empty set equals 0. We're done with our proof there.